start the meditation with some good long, deep in and out breaths. Think of the breath sweeping through the whole body, from the top of the head down to the tips of your toes as it comes in, then from the tips of your toes up to the top of the head as it goes out. And think of all the various thoughts you've been holding on to and feeding on and stashing away like a squirrel throughout the day, getting swept away with the breath, down out the feet and out. Do a little house cleaning here. The Buddha says an important part of staying with the breath, staying with the body in and of itself, is what he calls subduing greed and distress with reference to the world, or putting aside greed and distress. The world here has many meanings. You can think about the world outside, or just the whole world of your six senses, sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, ideas, anything that comes up in the mind. Just remind yourself, well, that's just a sight, or just the memory of a sight, or the memory of a sound. You don't have to get worked up about these things. You're not responsible for them right now. They don't have to impinge on your awareness. You may have some responsibilities after you leave the meditation, but there's no need to weigh the mind down now. No need to clutter it up now. And as I said, there's no need to stash anything away. Allow the mind to have some freedom for the time being. Your frame of reference is just this, the breath coming in and going out, your sense of the body right here, right now. And think of the breath cleaning out all the parts of the breath, energy in the body that haven't been ventilated for a while. We tend to have these stagnant areas, different parts of the body. and Make a survey. See which parts are not getting as much breath as the other parts, where there's a sense of blockage or a sense of things tightening up, loosen it up. Remind yourself that the breath can go through anything. It's like cosmic rays that can go right through the rock. The breath can go through anything in the body, the bones, whatever old, tight muscles. Try to notice which muscles you tend to tighten up to just to hold the body erect. Can you keep the body erect by loosening them, or while you loosen them? Try to figure out which patterns of tightness in the body are totally unnecessary right now. Again, regardless of whether you're going to pick them up after the meditation or not, for the time being, create a little freedom in here. It's almost like you're erasing your history, erasing any lines of communication or lines of connection with anything outside at all. It's important that the mind have this space that's really its own space. This time, even though it may just be part of the day, where it can let go all the responsibilities and worries and cares of the rest of the day. Again, remember, time right now is either a memory or an anticipation. Just like the world, it's just sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, ideas. Try to reduce things to very minimal terms like this so they're easier to let go of. If you allow there to be long, complicated stories or very elaborate theories about who you are, what kind of person you are, what troubles you have, they just weigh the mind down. And even if you can't sort them all out right now and solve the problems, or at the very least you can put them down for the time being. Just allow there to be the awareness of the breath energy right here, right now. You want a center at some point in the body to keep you focused, but at the same time you want to a larger range of awareness, so it fills the whole body. If there are parts of the body that you're not consciously occupying right now, other things can slip in or other things can hide out. And you don't want that. You want this to be your space. So it's like going into a house that 
has gotten dusty and dirty. There's a lot of old junk in the corners. So do some house cleaning. The type of house cleaning that as you sort through your old papers, no matter what there is, you're going to throw it out. Because as you know, a lot of these things will seem to have magnets and then they'll come back in after a while. But for the time being, let this be your space for just awareness in the present moment. This is your time for just awareness in the present moment. And forget, forget about the fact that this is an hour. We're sitting here. You're sitting here right now, right now, right now. One of the problems of having a regular meditation session like this is that we all know it's going to be an hour. And the mind tends to negotiate with itself. Okay, I'll give you ten minutes to think about this, or a certain amount of number of minutes to think about that. And all too often the thinking takes up about fifty-five of the minutes out of the hour. Then towards the end, you say, okay, now a little time to meditate. And you got five minutes of real concentration. Well, scrap all that. Just remind yourself, this breath, right here, right now. Make it as good as you can, as satisfying, as gratifying as you can. And you don't have to worry about the breath you had just now or the breath you're going to have in a minute or two. Just this breath right here and let it fill the whole body. However light or strong it's going to be, whatever feels best right now. And this gives the mind, which has been weighed down by its responsibilities, a chance to stand straight, open up. I gave those two images this morning, one of the, the coolies in Thailand who work on the ships. Back in the old days, before they had the big cranes, they'd have these long lines of people who carry these huge loads on their shoulders. And they'd walk bent down, bent down, bent down all the time, because that was the best way to carry a load. Never got a chance to stand up straight. But don't let your mind be like that. Or like the proverbial old grandmother who had this big load of straw that she carried around in case she would ever need a load of straw someday. Again, bent down and at the same time unable to carry anything else. They'd always ask her grandma, why do you have that old straw? Well, I don't know, but maybe someday I'll need it. And a lot of the things we carry around in our minds are just like that. Someday I'll have to think about it. Someday I'll have to work with this. Someday this is going to help me. And for most of us it's just that. It's old straw. The things you're going to need for the future are mindfulness, alertness, discernment. Because the future is extremely uncertain. You don't know how much longer you've got in this lifetime or where you're going to go after this one. What things are going to happen in the meantime? But you do know that if anything difficult comes up, your most important resources are going to be the skills you build in the mind, your ability to read a situation, see it clearly, keep in mind what's skillful and what's not. It's like the precepts. Sometimes people complain that they're hard and fast rules. It's better to think of them as clear-cut. Because when you find yourself in a situation where you're really tempted to break the precept, it's best to have something really clear-cut in the mind that's not long and complicated with lots of exceptions and conditions. You know, no killing, no stealing, no lying, period. It's easy to keep in mind. So you need mindfulness, you need alertness. to. See. So you can see what's actually going on. So you can be sensitive to the situation. And you need to be able to put aside everything else that's not relevant to that particular situation. Well, these are the skills you develop as you meditate, as you create this totally present attitude in the morning right now. The only thoughts that 
going to be useful right now are the ones that remind you to stay here, or that help you figure out how to stay here with more solidity, with a greater sense of enjoying it, than trying to keep your awareness all around. So there's no room for anything to hide out inside the little energy corners in the body. So for the time being, you have no responsibilities. For the time being, you have no history. In fact, any thought that would remind you of who you are, let that go too. The more you're able to do this, the more the mind will gain from the, from the meditation. But we'll even be thinking about what it'll gain in the future. It, see for itself that it's really good to be right here and to learn how to let go. If you can't let go for good, let go for the time being, because it'll teach the mind some lessons, give it something to remember, give you something to compare with the way the mind normally runs. And this will strengthen you when you come face to face with things that you're tempted to pick up and part of you knows that it's going to be bad, and the other part wants it. Well, this helps to strengthen the part that knows, okay, it's really not in your best interest. You really don't want to pick up that particular thing and you know what it's going to do to the mind. It's going to tie it down and won't allow you to have these moments of clarity. These moments of freedom, of lightness. And that way, the state of mind that we're developing right now for the time being will become more and more the normal state of your mind. It starts in bits and pieces like this. John Cha has the image of pouring a kettle of water. At first it's tipped over a little bit, so there's a drop, and then there's a drop, and then you tip it a bit more and it goes drop, 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 and then more is a drop, 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 and finally it's a stream of water. So we're working toward the stream. But if all you can manage right now is a drop, well, give the mind a drop because it's thirsty. 